In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father God, we thank you for today. We thank you for all the blessings, the graces that we receive each day. For your love goes beyond human understanding. Once again, Father God, we thank you for sending us your Son, Jesus Christ, to give us his message, to give us his love that we may carry on throughout this week. Send us your Holy Spirit, Lord God, that we may continue to seek and search the real truth that we can never find here on earth, but only in your Son, Jesus. May your Holy Spirit continue to inspire us, O Lord God, so that we may, be, we may go on living the way you would want us to be. Bless us, Father God, Bless us, O Lord Jesus. Inspire us, O Holy Spirit. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Today, uh, we are going to receive and hear the Gospel of uh, Mark chapter 10, verse 7, 17 to 27. In all the masses that we're gonna have uh, this Sunday, once again the Lord gives us the opportunity to reflect the beauty and the value of God's love, of God's salvation, that we, we are always looking forward to. Christ never stopped and Christ never ceases to give us the opportunity to see and seek the real beauty, the true faith that God has given to us through His Word, through the sacrament, and through the teachings of the Church. Our Gospel today once again invites us to reflect of the real treasure in terms of following Jesus. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Just as Jesus was setting out on his journey again, a man ran up, knelt before him, and asked, Good Master, what must I do to receive eternal life? Jesus answered, Why do you call me God? Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. Do not kill do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not bear false witness, do not cheat, honor your father and mother. The man replied, I have obeyed all these commandments since my childhood. Then Jesus looked steadily of him and loved him, and he said, For you one thing is lacking. Go sell what you have and give the money to the poor, and you will have riches in heaven then come and follow me. On hearing this, these words, his face fell, and he went away sad, for he was a man of great wealth. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it is for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were shocked at his words, but Jesus insisted, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were more astonished than ever and wondered, Who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, It is impossible for human beings, but not for God, for all things are possible for God. The Gospel of the Lord Praise to you, O Lord. Jesus Christ. My friends, the first part of the Gospel seemed to present what has been given to Moses in the Old Testament. And that is definitely, we can hear and we can see, we can read from the Ten Commandments. And here you will find the rich young man 
seem to be have followed almost everything that the commandments God has given him. But Christ saw one particular instance or one particular point, a very strong point indeed, that Jesus knew that he has to tell this uh, young man. And when Christ did mention, go and sell all your possessions and come and follow me. This man couldn't simply let go of all his possessions. He cannot simply leave behind everything that he has to work for, he has labored for. That's why he went away very sad. And Jesus once telling us, and he's telling here in this gospel today for us to hear and to listen once more that if we really wanted to follow Jesus, if we really wanted to enter the kingdom of God, we need to let go of everything that stop us from, from going. We need to let go of everything that hinder us. These possessions, these material things, the wealth, popularity, the reputation, the name, the responsibilities, the roles that we have here on earth, house and lot, cars, everything. If we do not know how to make use of all these things, then we can never enter the kingdom of God. You see, my dear friends, here the gospel tells us it is not enough for us to be able to know Jesus in the gospel that we hear every day or we read every day. It is not enough for us to go and serve the church we are in or we are connected with, giving everything for the sake of our own name, for the sake of our own reputation, and to make everything new so that people would see how good we are, so that people uh, would see how generous we are, then we are missing the point, my dear friends. For Christ is telling us here today that leaving everything behind is being able to forget all these material things, all this fame and fortune this world gave us, for the sake of his kingdom. Are we willing to let go of all these things for the love of God? Are we willing to share whatever possessions we have to the poor without expecting or asking something in return? We know it's not easy. We know it is not just a snap of the finger and we can do just like that. We know that. But what Christ is telling us, every day is a struggle. Every day, we, we would experience difficulties. We will experience hardships in life. But if we begin doing these things bit by bit, seeking the face of the Lord in everything we do, and without realizing it, that one day, as the days go by, perhaps, then we would see it is a lot easier for us to let go of the things that we have accumulated in this world because nothing can compare with the treasure that is ahead of us, the treasure that God would give us when the right time comes. My dear friends, this is once again a challenge for each one of us. And even the disciples even asked the Lord, the last part of the gospel, then who can be saved? But Jesus, nothing is impossible for man, but for God, everything is possible. This is the word that we should bank on. This is the word that God gives us that we should completely rely on. By the grace of God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, 
through the work and example and the word of Jesus, then we can go bit by bit, leaving everything behind with all our minds, our thoughts, and our hearts, seeking to live, believe, and proclaim the God, the gospel and share the gospel of Jesus to everyone we meet. Perhaps in our own respective family, in our own res respective um community with the, in the church that we 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 go and come each day with the, with the community or where we are a part of it or member of a particular religious organization then this can be a good example that we are leading in a way that God wants us to be and God wants us to do as I as the gospel tells us there is so much uh, conviction of the heart. There is so much discipline of the mind. There is so much perseverance and understanding. And there is so much faith that needs to be incorporated in ourselves, in our mind, in our body, in our soul, in order to, to see the beauty, in order to see the grandeur of God's invitation to each one of us. But we will never be able to succeed, my dear friends. We will never be able to, to do such, my dear brothers and sisters, if we keep on hanging on with these material things, material goods that we have, with this fame, fortune, popularity that we have. Then it would be very hard for us to follow our Lord Jesus Christ. Look what's going on today, especially in our country. We all know that election is about to come soon. And you would find a lot of people from all walks of life in the four corners of our country filing the candidacy to be a governor, running for mayor, councillor, party list, and so on and so forth. And sometimes you, you can't even explain this people who have accumulated already so many wealth from the people themselves are still running. What more they need? What more they would want to, to get by having this position, by, have, by running for a certain electoral post? Are they, not, are they not satisfied? Are they not content with whatever they have? And you would find even those who are running first time, are they really qualified? Or perhaps they have something at the back of their mind why they are running for a, a particular post or position. What is happening nowadays seem to be a complete contradiction of what God is telling us here in the gospel today. Why can't we simply live in such a way that we have everything that we need and at the same time follow Jesus the best way we could by sharing us our, our skills, our talents, our material things, our, um, I should say, finances, Wealth, I mean, to people who are in need without seeking so much attention that this world is giving us, that this world can give to each one of us. Because God is always telling us what you have done here. And people have known all these things that you have done. You have received your reward. You have nothing left when you go and meet the Lord. But rather... Share and give whatever you can to people and try to do it discreetly, quietly, silently, as quiet as you could and let God see and let God know everything that you do for your brothers and sisters here in this world, then you will be rewarded in the end. That is why, my dear friends, 
as long as we live, if we are always preoccupied by this fame, portion, by the name that we have worked out since we were young, by the reputation, by the wealth that we have, that all these uh, things that we have, the greatness that we can say can uh, should and must be measured within the context of everything that I have accumul accumulated here on earth, then we're getting nowhere because God himself tells us we need to leave everything behind. We need not to be enslaved by all these material things, all these popularities that we have here on earth because these are all hindrances. These are all obstacles to achieve the greatness that God has in store for all of us. My friends, once again, as we continue the gospel uh, reflection for the whole week, perhaps this is an opportunity for us to try to see that the good Lord is asking us ourselves, our mind, our thoughts, and our hearts, the purity and the humility that we have in regards to ourselves and in response to that faith that God has given to us, then we would be able to enter the kingdom of God. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity once again. We thank you, O Lord God, <clears throat> for your love, for your mercy, for your providence and your forgiveness. Send us always, Lord God, your Holy Spirit, that we may be able to see the greatness of salvation that you have given us that we may work it out here on earth, Lord, to, to slowly leave everything behind, share whatever we have to the poor, so that we may be worthy of your love and of the kingdom. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord God.